crystal skulls are made in Germany, that the, the Maximilian and these French, Austrian emperors, they, and we don't know why exactly, but they perhaps commissioned these life-size, very pure, um, just they're perfect in a sense, crystal skulls. And they were made in Germany. And we don't know how many were made. Uh, the Smithsonian has identified four or five and, and perhaps more, although uh, it, it seems like they're sort of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, as we say, yeah. where they found a few what they would they believe are modern crystal skulls, and they're sort of like saying, well, you know, this is the answer to, to the whole mystery. Hmm. I would say that's wrong. Yeah. But so... Some of these crystal skulls, including the British Museum one, probably the Mitchell Hedges one too, were made in Germany, then taken to Mexico. And rather than originally being some kind of fakes that were then going to be resold to museums, apparently they were the property of these high officials who now were, in many cases, uh, French or Austrian, they were they were European transplants who had come to Mexico, try to create a new empire in, the, in a rather chaotic country too. Yeah. <laughs> and so now you have these high officials with a mixture, I would say, of authentic Aztec, Mixtec, Zapotec crystal skulls. Uh, many of these may have been really quite small, not life size. But now you could add to uh, their collection of genuinely old crystal skulls some of these newer ones. And the newer ones were, were larger, uh, probably made out of Brazilian crystal that had been then sent to Germany, turned into a crystal skull. Uh, even with modern type uh, saws and machining, would still take many, many months yeah. to create these crystal skulls, but not hundreds of years. And this is one of the things, too, when uh, guys like Frank Dorland in the late 1960s, he studied in San Francisco the Mitchell Hedges skull. He, he believed that the Mitchell Hedges skull was really uh, found in Lubantan, this lost city in Belize. Mm -hmm. He thought that somehow the Mayans really had made it. He could not find um, modern tool marks, although apparently on, on, one, on the, one of the teeth of the Mitchell Hedges crystal skull, there, there are some scratches that appear to be from a power tool. Hmm. So he thought, but, but he genuinely thought that the Mayans had somehow made this, but he assumed, of course, then, too, that they had to use relatively primitive tools to do this. And so he, I mean, he then calculated that it would have taken 200 or 300 years oh my to God. make this thing slowly, <laughs> polishing it with sand and, and a leather rag, uh, trying to make it smooth. I mean, it just, uh, it's mind-boggling yeah. the effort <laughs> that they would have allegedly had to make. Right, right. You know. <laughs> so now you have... Uh, you know, it, 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 it incorporates, I think, uh, all of these studies where, yes, there are genuine ancient crystal skulls. They're real. Uh, we don't really know how they carve those. They're in museums now in Mexico and Guatemala and other areas. Then you have some of these German-made ones. They're the ones that are the more famous ones because they're very large, mm -hmm. and they, they're almost exactly the size of a human skull. The Mitchell Hedges one has this movable jawbone beneath it. One of the other things in the Mitchell Hedges skull that's unusual is that it has uh, drilled holes in the base of the skull. And those holes would then apparently have had some kind of wooden or metal rods inserted into the base of the skull. And that skull, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a unique skull, and, and it's bizarre, ultimately. Right. That skull could have sat on some altar, 
could have been lit from below. I mean, that skull had special light wells and what they call light pipes built into it that would channel the light and make it come out the eyes. It was specially made that it, it, it glowed and um, had a certain uh, kind of occult uh, presence to it and an aura. If you saw it and the eyes would be glowing at you and then on top of that, with these rods in the base of the skull inserted, you could manipulate the skull. And for instance, uh, say a priest could be underneath the altar, underneath the floor of some temple, mm -hmm. manipulating these rods. And what would happen is the skull would appear to be talking to you. Right, right. And uh, get this, uh, as, as some kind of uh, special priesthood um, fraud in a sense, you might have a temple, perhaps a Mayan temple or Aztec temple or something. The priests bring a person one at a time into the interior of this temple. Uh, the priest stands there. You are looking at this crystal skull on top of an altar. It's lit up and glowing. The eyes are glowing at you. You're, I mean, it's life-size. You're, you're quite amazed at this. And then... It starts talking to you, <laughs> and it the mouth is moving, and it's, it's in theory the skull can't really say anything, but the, say a priest underneath who's manipulating it, he starts talking, and he becomes the voice of the skull. Right, right. You know, so I... you are as some you know just uninformed peasant who's been brought into this temple. You're totally blown away. I mean, you can't believe it, what you're seeing. and it's But it's right there in front of you. Right, right. And here is a, a talking human head. It's all lit up and glowing. Its mouth is moving. Yeah. And, you know, words are coming out of it. And, I mean, you, you are really genuinely impressed and probably frightened. Who knows what the crystal skull might tell you at that point. Right. Uh, <laughs> one thing it might tell you is to give lots of money to the priests, you know, <laughs> as you leave the temple, something like that. There you go. Perfect for creating a new religion or something right there. Well, right. And you, <laughs> the crystal skulls, particularly the Mitchell Hedges crystal skull, is perfectly made for something like that. Yeah, and in right. fact, I mean, as they studied it, that's one of the main things they noticed was that yeah, this, this thing was made to talk. But now here's the other thing, and we, as we get into the technology here, mm -hmm. for these two holes at the base of the skull to have been made, I mean, they are just, you know, like a, a, like a barely a centimeter in diameter or something or less, and they go um, four or five centimeters up into the base of the skull, and they're perfectly round holes. For to slip uh, some kind of wooden or steel rod. To make that into a crystal skull, to drill a hole like that, you would basically need some kind of power tool. I mean, it, it almost couldn't be done otherwise. Right, right. Dorland, uh, Frank Dorland, who studied the skull, the Mitchell Hedges skull in the 60s in San Francisco, I mean, he, he was aware of all this, and, you know, he, he of course, knew about those these holes at the base of the skull, but how they could have made those, he was unable to figure out. And, uh, I mean, that's why he was saying it. it took him hundreds of years. But if you have diamond-tipped drills and things, I mean, then it all becomes quite possible. And certainly they had those in, in Germany. But, I mean, uh, once again, did the, did the Zapotecs, uh, the Olmecs, did they have this kind of a thing? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a curious thing, too, when you look at crystal skulls in Mexico and you go back to the Himalayas and to Tibet. The, these tantric yogis in, uh, who live in, in the Himalayas, this is, so we're talking now northern India and Tibet, these guys, their you know, skulls and crystal skulls were a big thing there. They're, they are real. Mm -hmm.